<laughs> Greetings, everyone. I hope you enjoyed our first project, the seven-part series that took you from the beginning to end of knitting a simpler pair of wool socks, not on very thin needles so that it's not too time-consuming when you're first learning this skill. And even with a little bit of color work, a beginner form of color work to help you make it more interesting. The second project will also be along the introductory lines. We will use worsted yarn and needles that are either four millimeters or three millimeters thick. If you're looking at your needle size, you might have a US number size labeled and then in parentheses, it will tell you the thickness in millimeters. I tested it and I know that you will either use 40 or 48 stitches, depending on which needles you use. But I want to show you how to take your color work a little step further. We're not going to get into very complicated work just yet, but I wanted to show you how you could make your own little pattern. You will need uh, some graph paper. You can use some small size graph paper or large graph paper. You choose which. In the video, I'm going to use this large scale graph paper to make it easier for you to follow. So let's begin. All right, let's take a look at these notes. This is something similar to what your notes will look like. First, I will you will test the tension using a couple of different needle sizes to see how many stitches you're going to need for a medium size adult sock. After testing my yarn, I realized that if I'm going to use three millimeter needles, I will have 48 stitches. If I have four millimeter needles, I will have 40 stitches with the yarn that I'm using. You can follow me right along. When the videos start, I will tell you what yarn I'm using and how many stitches, or you can test the tension for yourself and give it a try. Now, both of these are multiples of eight. So I'm going to make sure that my pattern repeats or has eight stitches and repeats five times for this size and six times for this size. Okay, realizing how many stitches I have helps me spread out the pattern and know how many stitches need to repeat. I could also say that I could have a pattern of six stitches repeating eight times, but because I want to make little forest trees, that would be too few stitches. My trees wouldn't be very big if I only had two little parts to them. So I expanded it to have three parts to the trees and I could draw it within eight stitches. Once I could draw them within eight stitches of width, you can see here how it fits within eight stitches. Then I could clarify my pattern here. So you can play around or you can join me in making the pattern that matches the one I will use in the video. I always think if you're doing this for the very first time, follow along with someone copying their pattern. By the time you finish, you will know how to do it yourself. So here you can see what my finished pattern looks like, and it will start to make sense very soon. These little circles are the main collar of the sock. And the little X's are my collar two of the sock. Okay, so we can simplify this by saying, what color will the trees be? you can choose the colors from the yarn you have. I'm going to choose the colors from the yarn that I have. I will have gray trees. And the main color of my sock here will be white. 
but the main color of my overall sock will be gray. So I'm going to have a lot of gray and white. This is what my sock is going to look like. Here is the toe part, the instep, the heel, And this will be an ankle sock so that we can devote a lot of time to learning this part of color work and make still finish without losing inspiration. There will be the heel. We will repeat what we learned in the first series. Here will be our decreases for the toes and the pattern will come right here. So I will have a little way zigzag pattern, maybe representing the forest floor. And then I will have the trees. Okay, so that's a decent sketch. We don't have to get too detailed. So all of this will be white. The toes here will be gray. These lines will be gray. And the trees will be gray. Okay, we are ready to draw our pattern, which we will follow in our color work. We know we want to repeat it over eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we end up casting on 40 stitches, we will repeat it five times. If you cast on 48 stitches, you will repeat it six times. Okay, so here we have these two waves that represent the forest floor. I'm going to say that the bottom will be here. So this is where my little wave will begin and I will put an X for gray. I will leave spaces blank for white because my paper is already white. Okay, so my zigzag will be three, three, three. And you can see how it will work. If we go from here, down, up, down, up, then the next stitch will be this one and we come and repeat. But you can see here that I want two of these lines. So I'm going to space two and come here. So I want two stitches between my, gr my gray zigzags, two white stitches. You can see I have gray, white, white, gray, gray, white, white, gray. Okay, that's my forest floor. Now I want to add the tree. So I will have one tree per repeat. Within eight stitches, I will have one tree. I want the tree edge to be here. I have seven stitches in my tree design. Where's that page you see here? I have seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This middle one is like the trunk. Okay, so I want the edge to be here. I know it's not going to be bottom, but it'll be up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The trunk is this middle stitch. Now, some of you will really, really want to line this up with this, and that's okay too. You can shift it all to the side. I like to line this up with this. 
It's personal preference. When you're designing your own pattern, you get to choose those little things that make you happier. Okay, we pull in and we have five. We see a little bit of the trunk again. Now our tree starts to get more narrow. So we have five. And three. Then we see a little bit of the trunk again. We have three and one. We can label here G for gray color and blank squares for W white color. You will definitely be able to choose your own yarn. You may want blue or green or red. You decide what you like the most. I hope you're going to have fun practicing with this pattern. And I hope you're going to try to make your own. You can draw this again and shift this one over to see what it looks like. You can see how I tried to line it up with this stitch here, the center of the tree. You might prefer this, and that's okay. You should knit it this way. I find that I really like centering it with the edge. And that's how I will knit it in our project video. For our ankle sock design.